Good morning. In this episode, we're going to a pretty exciting place. It's a place we've been wanting to go for a long time. Today, we go into Yellowstone National Park. As we left our accommodation in Paradise Valley, and drove to the north entrance of Yellowstone National Park and Mammoth Hot Springs, the scenic journey through the beautiful Yellowstone River Valley took around an hour. Entering the park, we couldn't resist passing through the iconic arch at the Gardner entrance, just north of the Montana and Wyoming state line. It's not necessary, but it's almost a rite of passage for visitors. We arrived at the Mammoth Hot Springs village and were greeted by the breathtaking terraces. Unlike typical center formations, the rapid growth of the travertine terraces here is due to the softness of the limestone. The hot water rising through the limestone dissolves rock and leaves behind a chalky mineral deposit on the surface, giving the terraces their distinctive appearance. That is just amazing. It's so clear. The colours are so clear. It's beautiful. I'm at Hot Springs, it was pretty busy, and now that we've left, there's hardly anyone there. It's all good, great to be here, can't believe we're actually here. Remember this, Yellowstone National Park spans almost 100 kilometres from north to south, and again, 100 kilometres east to west. This means that visiting all the park's highlights involved a lot of driving. We spent a lot of time driving, taking in the scenery until we finally spotted our first bison in the park. Yellowstone stands as the sole location in the United States where bison have continuously thrived since ancient times. The remarkable Yellowstone bison population is the largest of its kind on public land in the nation. Unlike many other herds, this group encompasses thousands of individuals that roamed relatively freely across the expansive terrain of Yellowstone National Park and certain neighbouring areas in Montana. It's really nice coming here for the first time. We've seen bison, we've seen some of the mammoth rocks and the smell. The smell from that sort of rotten egg sort of smell like just everywhere throughout the park. It's not real strong, but it's just there. Not sure if it's part of the altitude, like elevation that we're at, or just the different tropical trees, but my nose is completely blocked. <laughs> I've had all these different medications. Nothing's really working, so just got a blocked nose, but it's fantastic being here. So one thing I have noticed is the pine cones are really small compared to the ones at home. I'm not sure if they're different sizes in different states or different places, but these ones here were really small. As we continued our journey, we encountered a bleak geyser. Its continuous roar and bubbling hot water created an impressive spectacle against the backdrop of the chilly air. The 
vibrant textures and colours accompanied by the distinctive smell and sound made for a truly unforgettable sensory experience. The Gibbon River flows into a stunning waterfall not far from the geyser, creating a popular spot that draws many visitors, evident from the full parking lot. We did get a park, eventually. Surprisingly, Yellowstone National Park boasts at least 45 waterfalls and cascades, offering an abundance of natural beauty. While we had the chance to explore several, the area of the Firehole River and, and Firehole Falls on the side road was one of our favourites. We soon encountered more bison and took the opportunity to fill them from the safety of our vehicle. It's important for visitors to remember that these are wild animals and a safe distance of at least 25 yards should be maintained. We used a 70 millimeter lens for these shots. We stopped at the Fountain Paint Pot Trail, which featured a lot of geysers emitting steam against the cold air. This location provided the coldest experience of our journey, with snow flurries, sleet and a bitter cold wind blowing across the trail. The contrast of the steam against the wintry conditions was remarkable. The vibrant colours in the pools and surrounding landscape, coupled with the sounds and the scents, created an atmosphere reminiscent of a giant chemistry laboratory. It was a truly beautiful sight. So sit back now and enjoy the grand symphony of nature in Yellowstone.
Tonight we have the pleasure of lodging at the renowned and charming Old Faithful Inn. This remarkable establishment holds the distinction of being the world's largest log structure, or I call it a log cabin. It's a true marvel of craftsmanship, intricate detailing and artistic expression. Our reservation was made a year in advance, underscoring the popularity of this destination. If you wish to experience this or any other accommodation within Yellowstone National Park, it's advisable to secure your booking at least 12 months in advance due to the high demand. But even if you aren't staying at the Old Faithful Inn, it is worth your while to come on in and explore the wonder of this place. It's calming, it's a feast for the eyes, and is very warm compared to the cold outdoors. It was like a warm hug as you came in from the sleety cold wind outside.
cheers. So if you're coming to Yellowstone and you're thinking about staying at the Old Faithful Inn, we've got just the average room and we're just going to quickly show you around what one of the rooms are like if you decide to stay here. So as you come in, you'll get two keys. Well, we got two keys. There's two people. Um, it comes with two robes. Uh, so you can run up and down to and from the bathroom in your robe. This room does not have a bathroom. So the bathroom's for us. The men's bathroom is one room away. The women's bathroom is two or three rooms away. It's not very far at all. They're beautiful bathrooms, beautiful and clean. So the room has good lighting. It comes with your rubbish, your trash can. So it gets rid of recyclables, paper and landfill. There's heaps of room. We now the size of the bed. So the bed that we... I think this is the queen size bed that we have here. Not too sure. Queen size bed. Uh, nice and comfortable. Nice and neat. Beautiful presentation. If you come over to the dressing table, get a couple of drawers, bit of storage. There's an ice bucket. Not sure where the ice machine is yet, but every hotel that we've been to in America has an ice machine. So we'll find that soon. The room comes with a basin, you can, there's water, hot and cold water, wash your face, do your teeth, those sorts of things. It comes with nice little touches. <laughs> so a nice little cake of soap shaped like a bear, makeup remover if that's your thing. Hand soap and body lotion. Loads of towels down below. It's really cold outside. It's it's still sleeting by the sound of it. So this room is, I think, still heated by one of these. This is nice and warm. It's toasty warm. So that's the basic room. Home. Dear Mum, the outdoor deck provided the perfect vantage point on this chilly evening as we awaited the eruption of the old faithful geyser. Bundled up, we joined a small group of fellow guests, eagerly anticipating the spectacle. However, the biting cold prompted us to head back inside for our dinner reservation at the inn's restaurant. Securing a reservation in advance is crucial. With ours made two months ahead of time, we were fortunate as the restaurant was fully booked upon our arrival, with disappointed diners being turned away. Well, that's it for part one of our Yellowstone adventure. In the next episode, we will spend time at the Tetons National Park, but we will be back at Yellowstone for part two in the episode after that. In the meantime, good night and look after your mates. <laughs>